Hey there, folks. I'm Matt Hansen. And I'm John Johnson. And you're listening to Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. The podcast where we discuss favorites we've reread, both classic and new comics we want to read, and everything else in between. And here's the comic we picked this week. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. Today, we are reading Daredevil Yellow. Heck yeah. Yeah. Back to our, back to pretty much getting, becoming our, the, uh, the channel favorites, the team of Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Look, I can't help it if they make a damn good comic. And I want to share that with everybody because one, they make comics that like you could just pick up if you've never read a Daredevil or a Hulk or any of that shit and get. So, or like even Batman, Batman Long Halloween, you don't have to know everything about Batman to read that, you know? So, um, I don't know. They just make a damn fine comic team. Seriously. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, becoming, I think, my favorite team as for writing and drawing. I can't think of another team that is nearly as enough, enough like, or the same amount of work that they have. It's just consistently like, oh, wow, that yes. was really good. Oh, yes. that was really good. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Feel I can't think of any. I mean, most people, if they work in a team, um, I can't. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I mean, you have like, oh, Bernie Wrightson and Len Wein with Swamp Thing. But then it was like for 10 issues, <laughs> not book after book after book after book after book over year. I mean, 30 years they've been writing together. So they're still writing. They did a long Halloween tie in this this year. Yeah. So like. <laughs> they're still a good team so um so yeah we we just want to share that awesomeness with you guys and we've done one other daredevil book it was the frank miller i believe it's called the man without fear man was without the one fear, we did yeah, yeah it had remedia on the art but uh frank miller writing and uh this is kind of similar in that it's it's like an or it, there's an origin or it's not origin because you know th- this is part of that color series where they would do, you know, they did Hulk Gray, Spider-Man Blue, Captain America White, and this is Daredevil Yellow. And they in the Hulk, they didn't do this either. They started after the origin story. So I don't tell you the origin, um, which is where Born or um, Man Without Fear actually is like the whole origin of him as a kid, right? Like, yeah, like that gets he gets into like stick and like yeah, band yeah. And- yeah, so that like um that was kind of like a more in-depth version of what frank miller told in the 70s i guess and like filling in some gaps and this is more like what happened afterwards like feel filling in emotional gaps i would say like there's a lot more like you could read the old stuff and not get any of this in there (laughs) you know what i mean because like even though he's retouching stuff that might have been in the old comics um you're getting the the inside baseball of what daredevil was thinking in his head for a lot of those moments so um yeah so we should say uh this this is yellow it's called daredevil yellow because originally daredevil had a yellow suit or the like first i think it's like the first i don't know if it's like the first year or the first 10 issues or when it changed i don't know when it when it changed to red but um yeah and i honestly i don't know but the reason it is yellow in this, I don't know if that was like the original reason, but I was like, I thought it was a good reason. Why right. Had the yellow. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, they have both reasons in here. I don't know if those are both the original reasons or yeah. if they, if they just did it in the comic. And then, like I said, they're adding this color later it's on. Emotional, yeah. Yes. To why those are that, or those are like that. So um, also, I don't know if these are considered continuity or not, but I I'm, I'm willing to say they are because there's, they're not really changing anything. They're just kind of, adding color to what already was said kind of thing so um so we start off in uh in the first issue where basically karen page who you might know from the daredevil series on netflix she is the uh we'll call her the secretary but she's like their third partner in that in uh in the nelson and murdoch office um she has died recently um and it's just a little actual backstory i didn't know this because i didn't read i I read this but i didn't know it was in context of this book but apparently in the comics 
in Marvel uh, in 1999, Karen Page was killed by Kevin Smith, that son of a bitch, in, uh, <laughs> in, in uh, the second volume of Daredevil, which was in 1999. And then this came out in 2001. So this is actually tagging on to a very, fairly recent event that had happened in the comics. So it makes sense, like in continuity, that they would have this little miniseries and then he's looking back. So if you if you didn't know that, it's still a good book, but with that added thing, now me and John were talking. Hey, we got to read that Kevin Smith title, uh, or that that first run of it because um, now that's going to be fun for us. I'm sure you guys are going to be real lucky because you don't have to read the novelization of Daredevil by Kevin Smith because Kevin Smith is a wordy <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, we get to break it down for you, but yeah. um, and I have read it before and I know how wordy it is, so. Um, joke, it, it, Matt Scott, we love Kevin Smith, but yeah, yeah he's no, I, yeah. I just mean if he's you wordy. if you like Kevin Smith at all, you know that he just doesn't matter if he's writing or if doesn't he's talking, shut up, <laughs> just doesn't stop, which makes him a great storyteller. But I mean, yeah, it's it's sure. a lot. <laughs> yes, I mean, I laugh, but also I'm like, can we get to the point sometimes? But you know, he, he for overall, I, I enjoy him, uh, his humor and whatnot. So, um, but yeah, this takes place fairly recently after that event. Uh, like I said, it's about, well, probably this was being written a year after that event in the comics and it was published like the next year or six months later or whatever. So, um, so yeah, it's from 2001 and Daredevil is in a funk and because of this, he was in love with Karen Page. Um, and I probably, they were dating. I can't remember if what they were doing in the actual comic, um, in the volume two series, but, uh, I, I can't remember if they were just like if because in this they allude it's kind of like um people who like batman but not bruce wayne you know like that it, it kind of felt like that like she likes daredevil but not she's not in love with the other guys yeah. you know what i mean so um that's how it le- kind of left it at the end but we'll we'll get there but um so i wasn't sure if they were actually dating or not or if he was just in love with her and never got to never got for that to actually happen in, in his life uh, as matt murdoch but he is torn up that she died and um i guess we should say should we say what why how she dies or yeah, we can say because it's not even in this comic per se so yeah yeah we'll, we'll just okay, let so you know oh, spoilers wait. yeah spoilers for the kevin smith run uh, or, or that kevin smith uh daredevil volume but um basically he um kills or uh, bullseye kills karen page he throws daredevil's billy club at at karen page's head i guess and kills her so yeah. uh super fucked up <laughs> so it's even worse like that he you, no wonder he's all sad he's like it was my club you know um and that also might be i didn't know this when i read it i didn't know that when i read it so they, don't they mention his billy club a couple times like with her and in, in the same room and stuff yep so that might be why they say that like why so explicitly so yeah. yeah um so like you said, he's super sad. He's flying around town thinking about Karen. Um, and he's decided he, I, I don't remember where he got the idea, but he gets the idea to write a letter to Karen as like, uh, as like getting over like what's going on, like how, helping him cope with her death. So he's writing a letter to her about um, her and his memories of when they met and all this stuff. And um, we, we cut to, him well he's writing the letter to her and we cut to him um as a child in high school and uh him and foggy yeah him and foggy nelson who is his best friend slash law partner later on after they graduate college but they're in high school and uh they're they're looking at the paper and we find out the the paper's talking about murdoch's dad matt or daredevil's dad matthew murdoch is his name uh it's talking about matt murdoch's dad who's named Kid Murdoch because he's a boxer. Oh, and they just always got to give him, you know, some kind of fun, interesting or cute nickname to get people like, you know, like, oh, or, or like, you know, some announcer gives him a nickname and it sticks or whatever. They specifically give him the, the name Kid because he's old. So it's like Little John or, you know, it's yeah. like one of those uh, <laughs> ironic nicknames or whatever. So, uh, but he is rising up in the ranks. He is, he is fighting his opponents after they thought he was uh, washed up. He's kicking their ass now. 
And it's kind of like a, a thing where he's starting to become uh, looked at as a contender to be heavyweight uh, title so, or heavyweight champion, I guess. And um, Foggy's all like, dude, your dad's kicking ass. Like he's going to, he might be the, the heavyweight champ. And uh, Matt's pretty excited about that. And uh, we see that the, the dad, uh, what's his name? What's his, his dad's first name? Jack, uh, Jack Jack Murdoch, because his his actual boxing name was Battling Jack Murdoch. So, Jack Murdoch. Um, and so he takes the kids out to, for a dinner. I love that they're at this fancy fucking steak restaurant, and he's got a bottle of ketchup in his hand. Ketchup for his uh, steak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so he's you know talking to them, and we we find out because um, there's some people there that Jack knows. Um, that uh well i guess it's i guess matt knows what's going on because he he has obviously no one else knows that he has uh heightened senses so he can hear and smell and talk about or uh, hear people talk about stuff and smell things he's like oh that's that thing or whatever so he realizes that uh his dad is working for a dude named um what's what's the guy's name fixer fixer that's right and he's named the fixer for a reason because he fixes fights yeah so that's his promoter is fixer and uh so it's pretty obvious to at least matt murdoch that his dad is either being conned or he's in some kind of thing where he knows he's winning because it's fixed and uh but he seems okay with that at least until the night bef- of his it's i guess it'd be the, the penultimate fight for him to become champion it's it's the uh he's got to beat the number one contender to fight the champ and so it's that fight and he's but this time he's supposed to throw the fight yep and he's doing it at first but this time is a little different matt murdoch is there with foggy watching his dad or not watching it hearing his dad <laughs> uh box and uh and he falls down gets punched in the face and then the fixer is in his corner saying, no, that's right. You just, you take a fall or whatever, uh, just like we planned. And he looks over at his kid, Maddie, and he's like, I can't do it. And he stands up. It. Not in front of my boy. Yeah, not in front of my boy. And I'm like, he can't even see you. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so he gets up and he proceeds to beat the shit out of the guy. He knocks him out uh, and, and does not take a fall like he was supposed to. Um, and everybody's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's it's awesome for the crowd and everything, but the problem is you can see in the picture, and this is one of my favorite uh, double page spreads in this book is it, there's just like a bunch of angry gangsters <laughs> like in the crowd, like pissed off that they lost a bunch of money because he was supposed to throw that fight. Yeah. And uh, you just see Foggy and Matt all happy though. Like, yeah, dad won. And, uh, and so this is, this was like super sad. Uh, at the end of the fight, you know, they go in the locker room to congratulate uh, Jack. And he's like, here, son, here's my robe. And, of course, it's a yellow robe, which uh, stands out. We should also say at the beginning, in the, in the present day of this comic, uh, all, that, all that you see is red for his suit or anything he is. You see red. Everything else is black and white. And then when it went to the past, just like Grey Hulk, <laughs> when it went to the past, it was color then. So... Um, so the colors are now uh, apparent to everything and, uh, he passes, uh, Matt, his yellow robe, which obviously comes into play later. And he's like, he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll get dinner later guys. I gotta, I gotta go do something, um, first, but we'll celebrate. I promise. Like just wait at home for me. And, uh, as he leaves, you see his promoter and some dude that eats pistachios named Slade, that is uh, waiting for him in the in the uh, I guess it's the alley or the doorway. Yeah. Uh, to exit, and he's like, "Jack, come here," or whatever. And then that's that's the end of him seeing them. Pardon my dogs in the background. Oh, goddamn dogs! <laughs> my, if you hear any noise, it's my dog as well. So, um, but yeah, so uh, they're wait they wait up. They were they try to wait up, but they can't. It's it's, it's too late by the time they, um they're you know by the time they hear anything about his dad but they hear a bam like a, a shot and then uh wee, 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 and uh matt runs out of the <laughs> it was funny he he's with foggy and foggy doesn't know he has any extra abilities yet because 
Uh, it's before he, this is like before they're adults or anything. And Matt's not even Daredevil yet or anything. Yeah. Uh, but when he hears that siren, he just knows. He just wakes up and he's like, I fucking know. And then the other thing is uh, in his writing to Karen, he says, I wish I had told my dad how much I loved him that like that last conversation or whatever. But he, you know, he missed that chance. So when he when he hears the shot, he wakes up. He knows exactly what happened. Uh, he he uh, rushes out from the fire escape, which they're a couple floors up and he lands. But that doesn't have any issues and foggy's like what the hell like <laughs> how did matt do that and then uh oh, what was you say no no i was just yeah he, he he jumps down however many stories and just like hits the ground running and foggy's yeah. like uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah and by the time he runs out he he sees the well the, the cops ran real fast or got there real fast because uh you literally heard a shot and then the cops were right there and then we see they already got his dad out, outlined in chalk and everything on the ground. And uh, he's yelling, you know, at the cops to like let him through. And they're like, no, you can't come to the crime scene or whatever. And then Foggy's like, hey, he's blind. Stop, stop hassling him. And they're like, I would not have thought he was blind the way he was saying, you know, my dad or whatever, you know, <laughs> like, how does he know, you know? So, uh, but yeah, basically he had to like, see his dad on the ground like dead he was shot in the head right yeah like they say that later yeah. like he literally slayed shoots him in the back of the head execution style just super fucked up yeah it's messed up so they don't show any of that like violence wise but he, he is they do show his dead body with blood come from around like pooling around his head and so um so and then the most heart-wrenching part is you know he says like i love you dad do you hear i love you like oh man i was like we're starting like this like <laughs> like, like come on man yeah you, you i can't be crying now like this is the first four pages of the book or whatever so um but yeah so super touching moment uh that's super sad and then we see this is like the whole maybe origin of why he became a lawyer um is he's in court the problem is there's like no evidence there's no gun there's no no evidence that slade or mr sweeney who is the fixer uh if they're you know there's no evidence that they had anything to do with this or that they were even in the area so like i want this to be like you know kicked out judge and the judge is like i agree with you and yeah, it's like oh okay this was this was cool and powerful i thought when the judge says like i agree i concur and this case is dismissed and uh matt stands up and goes you fucking you know, he doesn't say fuck but he's like you judge did they buy you off like did they did they uh uh give you money to like let this guy off the hook and and then it was crazy i was like wow he just totally called that guy out but this yeah. is he looks he's in a suit so i don't know how old he is in this scene because like you know you know how trials take longer yeah than uh than normal you know than like a year or whatever sometimes they can take like four years to like go to trial and convict and all that shit so maybe it took a long time but he seemed like he's already at least in law school or something at this point um because well I, you know i said he becomes a or th this had a formation of him becoming a lawyer i meant him becoming daredevil yeah so like he he's like obviously the law can't always be upheld because of bad people and bad judges being corrupted and stuff so yeah, and the, the fixer guy even says to him he's like well I, that's a lesson to you kid you should know you know who you're who you, basically you should know what that you're gonna win before you step in the ring whatever and it's like right. whoa like okay yeah so they've definitely like i'm sure lays the groundwork for that right right so so uh then matt is able to graduate law school and he says like that made that gave him even a more of a fire to become a lawyer as well uh to like make sure that shit doesn't happen and at least someone would be like there that he knows is honest like him and foggy and uh and then i just like that this was a kind of like a bonding moment between the friends you know and this was in the show i think too where he's like where foggy's like you know they're walking out of the graduation he's like so matt should it be foggy or nelson and murdoch or Mur murdoch and nelson and you know we we know daredevil he's a nice guy He's like, it, it could be Nelson and, and Murdoch. It's fine. Well, you know, he's not, he doesn't insist on that. But then Foggy also says, and we got to hire a secretary. And 
if you know Daredevil, the secretary, of course, is Karen Page that he hires. But like we said, he knows that the law isn't always going to be able to have justice because of corruption and whatnot. So um, he digs out of the locker that it was his dad's old fighting locker in the house. Uh, he because he still lives in the house too that is that he grew up in uh, at this point. So uh, the the another sad thing they talk about is his dad. He never got rid of his dad's chair because he just couldn't. Like he was like, "That's my old man's chair." Like I man's can't chair. do it. So, um, but yeah, like he pulls out a his dad's robe, his dad's fighting robe that he gave him uh, at, right before he died, and it's yellow, like we said. So he uh, he's like. I'm going to make something out of this and like, it'll be my little homage to my dad. We'll uh, like keep his memory alive. I'll make a yellow costume for him for my daredevil kicking ass stuff. So, cause he also taught his son how to fight and everything too. So like that was before, before stick, he learned how to fight from his dad's boxing, you know, uh, gym or whatever. So, um, so he, you know, make i don't know where he gets the billy club but he he makes everything else like he stitches everything else uh by hand out of his dad's uh or at least the covering of it is his dad's robe um do you know you don't know they don't say where he gets his billy clubs or anything right no not specifically he just talks about other heroes like he's you know he's read about fantastic four and spider-man he knows that like they're not going to get involved in these low like smaller low-end problems so yeah you know, that's like why street that's, crime yeah so that's why he is stepping up for this. Yeah. So he becomes Daredevil, uh, and he looks so badass, I should say. Tim Sale's art, you know, in this is, of course, as usual, superb. But just, like, I think the colors on this one are a little bit more... I don't know who did the coloring on the Gray Hulk one, but these ones stand out more because Hulk being gray is a little more muted, you know? But because he's so bright yellow and everything, I don't know, he really pops on the page. And uh, I, I actually looked up, or I was looking at who the colorist is, and I was like, hey, that's the guy who does a bunch of comics still. So, so like, that dude's still working. He's, uh, he did, most recently did, like, the White Knight series with um, Sean Gordon Murphy, the Batman series and stuff. So oh, nice. he still does good work. So, uh, But I, I particularly wanted to say that his colors were really good in this comic. Um, everything really stood out and was very cool. Um, but, yeah, so he becomes Daredevil. And he proceeds to take out, you know, a mission on finding who, you know, finding out exactly who, obviously getting justice for Slade, who killed his dad, and then finding out where the fixer is, because the fixer's kind of gone in hiding, he's in the background, and then also finding out who the boss of the fixer is to take them out. So he kind of takes on... He's been organizing all of this BS. Yeah, so he takes on, like, organized crime, we'll say. A bit in this and uh he does eventually um after like beating the shit out of enough people and he he gets to slade who says that he'll talk right he like uh he 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 becomes a rat i guess we'll say for uh to daredevil on the mob um and he <laughs> he actually puts a gun to his head which i thought was pretty intense for a superhero for marvel yeah, well, and but he still like he it literally says it was thrilling to like right. beat the shit out of these guys. So. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty great. But he gets, he does get him to testify. I like that we get to see him like jumping around, kind of like Spider Man, but he doesn't have like the webs and stuff, right? So he actually uses his Billy Club. It's it can like come apart, and there's like wire inside that he can swing around with, kind of like He's- Batman. It's cool. He's like doing kind of like parkour stuff. Yeah, like you said, like he's kind of grapple hooking with it. But I love that they show him like sliding down a a a handrail, like it's a a skateboard almost. Kind of like it's cool. Like the different uses of it, I thought that was neat. Yeah, I I liked how much motion they give Daredevil in this. I I'm trying to think if like they usually show him doing that kind of stuff, and I don't think I've seen any comics where he does that kind of stuff. I can't think I've seen it in comics because like I've seen him in team ups in comics. I'm like, you know, I've seen him like, I've seen pages of like, you know, the wire around him, but never like really like using it. I've seen him that. use the wire as like a grappling hook thing or the the yeah. Billy Club, but I haven't seen him like kind of as parkour as he is in this. You know, yeah. like he's he's like Spider Man style in this, where he's bouncing around on top of cars that are moving. He's 
like you said, riding his billy club down like uh, handrails and stuff. So finally, uh, he finds the fixer and he tracks him down and he chases him into a subway. And this, I thought this part was pretty fucked up for a hero as well. Um, he chases him down and he's like, I can smell the, that smell of cheap cigars. And, uh, you know, it, it, it draws, it sends a line right to me, you know, cause, cause obviously he can't see. So, uh, he's following the guy into the subway. The guy jumps in, onto the tracks and, uh, tries to throw a brick at him. Doesn't, you know, Daredevil just blocks it. And as he's running on the tracks, he has a heart attack and he died. And, and Daredevil's like, I don't fucking cry or anything. He's not trying to save the guy. He's just like, I hear his heart beating and then it stops or whatever. It's like, fuck. <laughs> like, he's not calling the ambulance. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he's not, he's not trying to help this guy basically. Um, but yeah, he's, no. I mean, it's the guy that killed his dad. So yeah, he, he does let the, tra- he does uh, make the train switch tracks so the train doesn't hit him. Right. Well, I mean, that would have hit him too as well, probably. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, the yeah the subway's coming, and he has to. He it's cool. He throws the billy club at like the the I guess the emergency direction switch or whatever the manual switch that switches track lines or whatever. So the the subway misses him. But uh, yeah, it's just a cool, like a, a pretty fucked up, but also cool like uh, scene to have a Marvel character be so like hard or whatever. And I thought this was funny too. I guess the police heard the ruckus or whatever because they come down. And they find Daredevil just over this dude's body. And he's like, hey, guys, Daredevil here. You know, you haven't heard of me, but I'm a new hero. And uh, this guy was bad, believe me. And uh, you guys take it from here. I was like, really? Like, <laughs> cops wouldn't be like, masked person, stop. You know, stop what you're doing and put your hands up. They just, like, believe him, I guess. And they're like, yeah, nope, I guess it's no problem. You just found sure. this guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got a... He- He's got a costume on him, so I mean, why would he be lying? Hey, that Spider Man guy does it, right? So why can't this guy? So, yeah, uh, I just thought that was interesting. But uh, so then we cut to uh, Nelson and Murdoch offices where Foggy is kind of interviewing for new uh, secretaries. And after a very long day, it's like a, a Mrs. Doubtfire scene where she's hi- trying to hire the nanny, and you hear, like, you know. Yeah, just all these different. I am job. Like, <laughs> but yeah, there's literally like scenes just like that where like, except it's in person where some lady comes in and she's got a kid with her and the kid throws up all over Foggy. And uh, and then there's one, per- I like my favorite person was the first person who's like, it, like Foggy's like, well, it says you were top of your class at Columbia. Yeah, that's cool. And then he's like, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, it's, this this job really is something I want, but uh, I can't work Mondays, Thursdays, and every other Friday. Is that a problem? Well, like, <laughs> it's like so you can't work. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great. So you're not you can't do anything we need you to do except like three days out of the week. So, um, yeah, I just thought that was funny. Uh, but we we see the the new person that he hires is Karen Page because she just happens to be the last person who comes in and says everything that needs to be said and and then also is i guess foggy is, is, is easy or she's easy on the eyes to foggy is what yeah he, yeah exactly it's also he so yeah foggy is like attracted to her so yeah well that's not why she gets the job but that's definitely foggy has from the very beginning an attraction to karen yeah um because yeah they definitely make it known that like right away that foggy's like hey and then even and this is interesting they even kind of bring up at the beginning that like matt because he's writing this can to karen you know, after the fact he's like and that's when i, I you know i should have known from the start that like you know something was going on but you know i was blind to it at that time you know too i sh- but i should have seen it you know, you know like uh-huh. it was so obvious kind of thing even i should have seen it you know so like he's talking about i guess the feelings that foggy has for karen and that kind of thing but uh, then we kind of like move forward a little bit in time because uh, the issue, that, that issue ends and we start a new one. And we start off the first page of that issue, the next issue with the Fantastic Four breaking, well, specifically the thing, the breaking thing, I, through the wall of their, of their law office. That's nice of him. Yeah. Well, it's, it's very much like him. Like, 
Well, I mean, they could have used the front door, but no, that's well, the thing. Mr. Fantastic says that. He's like, why? I when I said just pop your head in, I didn't mean literally pop your head in, big guy. Like, I meant, like, go through the front door up to their suite or whatever, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. So, but the, it, this is great. They're riding in their fantastic car, which is just the stupidest looking mobile or whatever. Yeah, it's like. the really old dumb one where it's like there are four different, like, it's not one car they all sit in. It's like four different pods connected yes. together. Yes. And of course, the biggest character in the Fantastic Four gets one of the tiniest sidecars. Honestly, there's no way he would even be able to fit in that one. I, I, it's, it's just perfect for the comic, though, you know? Like, yeah. Like, it's just ridiculous that he could fit his body in there. But one thing I really liked is uh, Matt Murdock talks about how, how, you know, he obviously can't see them, but he can hear the thing's heartbeat and he's like it is so much bigger than i thought it was you know like like just the mass of like oh, yeah. what, what it sounds like to him or whatever like i don't know it, just, it was cool that they were talking about that they, they really show that's one thing in this that they did that i really liked is they really showed daredevil's powers of the other his other senses really amplified because but not with but without showing that you know normally the trope is like they'll show a page of like what he really sees and it's like an echo location kind yeah. of map or whatever some shit like that they never do that in this which i really appreciate it they just explain it in words yeah you know and so i i like the way that they sh- they explain it more than showing it because everybody's done that scene or have read that scene where it's like or at least in the show they always show like what he sees <laughs> or the movie yeah it was well, just like you know oh, i someone taps on the desk and it's like <laughs> like and you know you can see the outline of everything in like red or green or whatever the fuck you know color yeah. location it is. So, or um, that great yeah that great scene in the old Daredevil movie where it's raining and then, oh he can see her. Yes, because the droplets are hitting her. It's like yeah. shut the fuck up. Oh my god. <laughs> but oh no, what's the song from that? Oh, the Evanescence song. Yeah. <laughs> bring me life. Bring me back to life. I can't wake up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> This is the part where me and John burst into Evanescence song. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. But um, yeah, so they, they they burst into the window, and basically this is their first big uh, client. Uh, and Reed Richards is just like, "Hey, I wanted you for like legal matters. Just keep you on retainer. You know, we got patents, we got copyrights. We need to, you know, make sure are held up and everything. So like, here, just you know, we want to work with you." It's just luck. I don't know why they pick them at all. They just, hey, here's a law office. Like while they're flying, I just imagine them being like, "We need a lawyer." There's one, and they just pull in. You know, like no. Well, he says that he was like the top of the. Uh, uh, Richards knows that he was like yes. the top of the class. That doesn't mean he's a good lawyer. That means he's the top of the class at Columbia. That means he's smart. <laughs> I guess, but that doesn't mean he's a good lawyer. Have you ever watched uh, Better Call Saul? You don't. You don't have to be the best, the best, or the most smartest guy in the room. You just got to be the best talker. You know what I'm saying? So that's true. Yeah. But uh, and then also the, I thought it was funny. The thing calls them shysters, which I was like, is this a word they're allowed to say in comics anymore? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I've heard it before in other comics, but it just seemed really pronounced because the thing is saying it in this. I thought it was like funny. Um, but yeah, so they, they hold now the fantastic four has them on retainer. So they now have like a very steady source of income, at least from them. And now they're like the, the people, right? So the, the, or like, they're the guys that, you know, as the fantastic four is clients. So, um, that's like making a name for them, we'll say. And, uh, one thing that's interesting is, uh, Karen page always says, always calls everybody like Mr murdoch or mr nelson and foggy's always like dad just call me foggy and then same with same with matt he's like oh just call me matt or, you know so like she she like makes it a thing to always call them mr matt and mr or mr uh murdoch and mr nelson at least at first and then um uh, but it seemed like they were trying to make it seem like as she becomes more familiar and you get more in the friend zone then she'll call you your first name or whatever like yeah. If she actually is attracted to you, because later on they're like, she's like Mr. Daredevil, like, <laughs> and they make it a thing to say that as she's like, hey Matt, hey Foggy, I ran into Mr. Daredevil yesterday. And yeah. It was like, huh, that's interesting. 
so like yeah they 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 make it known that she, like at least at first she always calls them mr it and at first and then after a while they call she calls them foggy and that but it's kind of like now you're friend zoned you're never going to have a relationship with her so um or a, a, a romantic relationship i should say yeah um so like yeah that now matt is now establishes daredevil he is going out every night and like you know fighting street crime he's being established as daredevil now he's going around town and uh slade the guy that talked has now been given death a death sentence which i was like wait he got the death sentence and he was a was a witness and yeah <laughs> he his lawyer sucked i'll say that <laughs> what a deal <laughs> so here's the deal uh we're gonna put you to death but you also have to talk all right sounds good <laughs> slade is on death row now and matt murdoch goes to talk to him as matt murdoch and is like hey slade um i know you're on death row and i never found out who was like uh, in charge of the fixer so if you tell me that like who's the boss of the boss then i will see if i can get you like a commuted sentence or whatever like you'll you won't be on death row anymore maybe i i'll i'll be your lawyer basically um which is interesting because if your lawyer is i don't know if you could do that if your lawyer is the guy whose dad you killed yeah that seems like, a, <laughs> seems like a conflict of interest but i don't know if it is because it wouldn't be a conflict of interest because the interest you would think would be to put him away oh i guess yeah the conflict of interest would be maybe i'm gonna be a shitty lawyer right yeah like I'm, I'm defending him and you're not really yeah okay that makes sense yeah you couldn't do that legally but in the comic world you can so <laughs> so he says that but then slate is like fuck no uh i'm not i'm not i'm i'm not working with you i like i would be killed right away and not only me but like my family so like i have something to live for it's not just my life on the line it's my kids and stuff yeah and so i guess matt murdoch didn't do his research he didn't know that but then there's this really really creepy panel where he like slade kind of like narrows his eyes because he like resents murdoch coming to like offer him a a um a, like a deal or whatever and uh he's in like slade's eyes get all small and his grim like his grit his grimace and his mouth like pulls back and you see his fucking crazy looking gums or something i don't know it's really creepy looking it's very but, creepy yeah but he says like you should have seen it kid i put the gun up to your to the back of your old man's head and blew his brains out it's just like oh my god like <laughs> so obviously um and then he, oh and then he on top of that he goes oh that's right you can't see so he even rubs the fact that he's blind in his face so uh he he basically tells him to like fuck off and then at the very end, he's like, hey, would you mind bringing some pistachio nuts? I can't get them in here. Like, so it's kind of like a, a last, like, fuck you or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then we get, like, kind of like a, there's like a subplot in this book that was just there for, like, um, kind of establishing, like, Karen Page and Daredevil's relationship. But uh, there's a woman who comes in who's like, I want you to help me find my husband or, like, help me protect me from my husband, I should say because he's like trying to kill me and stuff uh, and like i i want to like uh have you as my lawyer to protect me from whatever he's going to try to do yeah and basically she gets scared and says like oh no he's gonna find me and while they're having this meeting and so she runs off but matt murdoch's like something's weird she's lying there's an odd like aura about her or whatever you know he just knows something's off because he can tell people lie just from their heartbeat or whatever yeah and so um they get a knock on the door a couple days later and it's her husband right that is this like yep. the guy yeah so this guy is supposed to be her husband i don't know if he's actually her husband but it's this dude called the owl and when we say the owl i thought i was like for a second i was like wait are we reading the batman comic like this is like the, the fucking penguin like totally but like i thought for a second like i took me out i'm like wait no this is marvel this ain't the penguin i, I will say i know this character actually i know who so, he is too but i just yeah the way that he's drawn or whatever like the they make him look like an owl but i forgot that that is a character in daredevil oh. or in, in oh, marvel okay. and so i was like wait they're not doing the penguin this isn't batman because also they've done so much dc stuff i just you know it was like yeah. oh yeah i've seen this art i've seen this you know before so uh but yeah so 
it is the guy that comes that says he's the husband of that woman is the owl the yeah he's like don't worry about my real name just call me the owl the owl and you're like Ooh. um <laughs> i don't know if that's okay i don't think we can use that on your you know the pay stubs that we have to sign or whatever you know like, like your check i'm gonna, you can't I'm gonna need your owl. legal name sir yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Who? So, don't worry about it Who? <laughs> don't, don't think about it or whatever um and then uh that issue ends with that like cliffhanger of the owl face and then um then we start the next issue with daredevil has now moved up from street crime he is fighting villains so, yeah, like so straight up villains. super villains he's fighting electro at the beginning of this um you get to see him kind of get outclassed by a super like a meta human or whatever because he doesn't have all he he doesn't have like super strength or super speed or anything he just he's he's like a, a uh, an athletic man who has extra senses or whatever yeah so like i would say kind of like his other senses are raised to the peak of their performance right right so like that allows okay, him yes. to move faster but he still had to train to have that yeah speed or whatever you know so but he's fighting people who have like electric powers you know like like he doesn't have anything to combat that except his brains so he does defeat electro with his brains uh, I did like this. This was pretty cool because yeah, they're they're fighting across town and they pull they into like some theater or something, and he uh like as Electro's kind of like got him on the ropes, he uses his billy club and he uh knocks one of the sprinklers on and it like uh, uh, you know, I messes with Electro. I didn't know that that would hurt Electro. Well, I what I, the only thing I think is it would it would make his electricity go everywhere. And, you know, it would like maybe like over amp him or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like he becomes it, a ground fault. It becomes a ground fault for him or something. You know? Yeah. So. I mean, he definitely gets hurt. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. um, So anyway, yeah, that and I was like, the whole th- I was reading this. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. You know? <laughs> Just because I deal with in my job electricity and stuff or whatever. <laughs> also, in my job, there's some fire sprinkler shenanigans here because sprinkler water is fucking black when it comes out of those pipes. It's disgusting. It's they just put it in. I know, I know. They always <laughs> do that in movies. Whenever someone, whenever someone sets a fire alarm off, one, the sprinklers activate, which they don't do in a fire alarm unless a sprinkler actually activates. Just that one does. Usually, a whole room or the whole building activates in a movie, and then also, it, it's not black. It's always like clear, nice, yeah, pristine water. Water that it's okay that it's dripping down. You no, no, no. Fine. Definitely do not <laughs> open your mouth when the sprinklers go off because. That's fucking disgusting, gross, smelly water. So, um, but yeah, anyway, back to Daredevil. Uh, <laughs> he does defeat Electro. Uh, he gets at the show that he was at, like, or at the show that they were fighting at, um, like the theater. Uh, all the, I guess there was like a chorus, maybe, like a, like a thing of chorus girls or something yeah. that were dancing. And they're all like hitting on Daredevil, like, Ooh, Mr. Daredevil, Mr. Devil, or what, I don't know, you know, like, <laughs> what those muscles. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, and then in, in the meantime, he's, you know, he's swinging around town. He's going across the uh, Nelson Murdoch front window and Karen Page sees him. He's like, oh my God, it's the daredevil. And uh, so she, she sees him for the first time and you can instantly tell she's into it. She's like, yep. and apparently she, she's been like reading the news on him and stuff and like really just like finds this daredevil person fascinating. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big, big fan. And so uh, Matt walks in right after that. So it's kind of like he was flying into work or he was uh, swinging into work. (laughs) Swinging into work. (laughs) But no one knew that. And then they're like, oh, my gosh, Matt, you missed it. Daredevil swung by. And, you know, he's like, what's all the excitement? Like, he's playing it all, like, chill or whatever. So, um, yeah, this was funny, too. So Foggy, this is, you know, I I don't know how many months have gone by or years or whatever, but uh they, because they don't really say each issue kind of just starts in a different future point so um like in the story so this issue started and i don't know how far along it had been from before maybe months maybe a year or something but they've all been working together now for a while the only thing about this relationship with foggy and her is like they're not going out right like i wasn't sure no. if they were he's just trying hard still hard He's real fucking hard because later on, I mean, okay, well, I won't say what happens later on yet, but he basically, he invites her to go on a date now. This is the first time we've seen him actually ask her on a date. Foggy does. Foggy's like, hey, you want to, you like bowling? 
and she's like i like bowling and then matt this fucking asshole he knows too by the way i mean he should if he can tell heartbeats and shit he should know how foggy thinks about karen and uh you know why why he would do this i'm not sure but he literally is like i'm in and foggy's like oh oh did you did you want to go bowling too like, <laughs> like, like hey i thought you uh said you couldn't like you were not a bowler or whatever you know and he's like yeah i'll try it might as well it's like motherfucker stop it i'm just trying to be a date man like what the fuck so yeah matt totally cock blocks him well i don't think it's i think that it was more of like foggy's having a hard time so matt's like yeah i'll go and like maybe help or just be i don't feel like that because he literally says you you're the original i can't tell a strike from a gutter ball guy and he's like, this is the first time for everything, Foggy. Like, he's just, he's not getting the signs, the signal from Foggy. Like, hey, why would you come? Why would you come? You're okay. blind. It's bowling. It was obviously me trying to go out on a date with it. So that's, that's, and then, you know, Karen's like, no, it'd be fine. I'll, I'll be, I'll help you, Mr. Murdoch. So they go bowling and Foggy's trying to show off for her. He's a pretty good bowler. He's getting strikes. He's talking about, oh, maybe I'll break a 280 tonight, you know? Strike a Reno. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that sounds like something you'd say, John. What are you uh, talking about? <laughs> How dare you, sir? I'm definitely the daredevil in this friendship. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so uh, like they're talking. I thought this was interesting or funny. If if this was me, if I was Miss Karen Page here, he says like, "What? Well, write that down, Miss Karen. That strike or whatever." I'm like, "Bitch, write your own strike down. I write your shit down for money. All right, this is not my job." <laughs> He's on a date with her. He should write it down because she yeah. has to write his shit down all day long. So uh, just to, for if you were had a, were on a date with your secretary, which is probably not a good idea, um, <laughs> don't tell her to write shit down for you at the date. You know, Make a note while you're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Date. Even if it's part of the date, like taking scores, it's still like weird. So uh, that's just something I thought was funny where he's like, write that down. And I'm like, ooh, uh, that would not probably not go over well nowadays. But uh, so Matt, so Matt goes up to Bull, and he's you know you, I, you're wondering as the reader like oh is he gonna like be good? Is his senses like this is also why I was like oh I feel like his senses in this aren't as super as not they're not as like heightened past reality as some comics make him out to be or like movies maybe too. But like he can fight guys, but he, if the pins are standing still, he can't see them or like feel where they're at or there's nothing there's nothing to tell him where those are right yeah so either he's faking it here which he could I, see, be. I, I thought he was faking it he could be but that would mean he's even more cock blocking because he knows karen is going to come help him and she does the whole like you know in a, in a scene where there's like a guy and a girl and either it's usually it's him trying to teach her but like yeah. it could be like in go like in ghost when he when he's got his hands on her hands when she's doing the pottery it's like she does that with him but with the bowling ball like yeah this is how you throw the ball or what you just do this and you know the the hands are in silhouette as they release the ball and yeah so he hits, uh, a pin. He hits one pin and she's like victory and then she fucking jumps on him and hugs him see this is why i'm like that knew exactly what the fuck's going on because he's like and then i I felt your heart like in, in my heart like in beat together like we were both yeah feeling it you know i and, felt your heart through your boobs yeah basically on my yeah. chest yeah together <laughs> <laughs> it's like we were one it's, it's amazing i never felt this feeling before with you when your breasts were touching me it really moved me <laughs> it really did move me when your breasts were touching my chest and so yeah but basically yeah that's what happens she hugs him uh and he get he falls in love with her like instantly basically he's like uh when you were um when you were you know when you're hugging me that's that's a like i knew we were going to uh live for or like i felt like i was going to live forever because of that like yeah. because uh as you do as you do when you're in love and you're a young whippersnapper you just you fall in love and you feel like it's never going to end or whatever so um and then this part particularly i thought was pretty fucked up we cut to New York State Penitentiary, where it is death night for Slade, who Slade. testified but still somehow got the death penalty. <laughs> and I guess that judge is really hard. You know, maybe like the deal was made, and then he was like, the judge is like, nah, 
death. Like, you know, like, I, the court does not accept your, your deal. Like, so no, you're still gonna, yeah, you're still yeah. getting the chair. Exactly. So they're setting up the chair for Slade and Matt Murdock is there. And uh, this was super fucked up. I thought um, the funny thing was he brought, you know, as a joke, maybe he brought, uh, or as like a fuck you to the guy, he brought um, pistachio nuts. And it says he kept them in his pocket though. Cause uh, he just didn't feel like bringing him out or whatever when he was there because basically they strapped the guy up to the chair. He, you know, he gets electrocuted and Matt was like, the smell. The smell was coming through the window. The smell could have come through three feet of concrete. Like, that's how disgusting it was. Like, yeah. And I think this kind of like shakes him. Like, I don't know if he feels justice for his dad finally or any of that stuff there. He doesn't talk about that. He just talks about being sad still, and he's sitting in his dad's chair. And that's what he says, like, I could never get rid of it, um, this chair, you know, because it's my dad's chair. And You know, he's looking at, or he's, he has a picture of his dad in his hands, although he can't see the picture. Um, but he's just, like, thinking back, crying about his dad and stuff. So, um, so yeah, that was, like, a super fucked up scene. Did you have any reaction to that scene where he's like, I could smell through the glass? Or- yeah, I mean, it, it was just... It was in, it was intense. obviously, it, it felt like I felt like it wasn't more. It was it was more of a like not feeling justice, but more like you know like what is the you know made him like kind of like I felt it made him like be self introspective and be like you know what is the what what's going to be the cost of yeah oh getting, yeah. yeah and especially like yeah like he he did this but we still didn't get you know like a full we don't I don't know who who hired the fixer right 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 yeah. yeah it was it was um it was one of those things where i i kind of like that they don't hold your hand that much on it like they they he has emotions and stuff obviously and the writing is still good enough for you to be like feel the moment but the way that in, in the way that you know you see someone crying and you're like oh what are they going through exactly i don't know because i'm not them that's kind of what it is like they're still hidden you know there's still feelings obscured even though we're getting what his internal feelings were somewhat from the writing like like exactly how he felt is not just like told to us by the narrator or something you know what i mean which i kind of like i like that they're not just saying that kind of stuff so then like the a couple maybe like a week goes by or whatever and foggy in the office uh brings out or brings up the topic of karen and it's like yeah isn't she great like i just can't you know i just can't get over her and matt's like interesting and uh he's like i'm gonna ask her to marry me this motherfucker hasn't been on a real date yet and he's like i'm just gonna ask her to marry me yeah that guy uh, i don't know what you call that person a simp is that what you call that person someone who's just so into them but so into someone but they're not they're not getting anything back out of it or they're definitely not getting feelings back yeah. But they they can't let it go or whatever i don't know what that's called but uh foggy is definitely that in this <laughs> so um but that was the end of the issue with the ring then we cut to the next issue where daredevil is on the top of the empire state building i was like what's the name of that building <laughs> you know that building the one the big, in new york the big building that's like in it's like in this big empire the city yeah. in New York. You know, uh, James and the Giant Peach building. What, what, you know, <laughs> what, what building is that called? But yeah, so uh, he is, I guess Karen has been kidnapped by the owl, that son yeah. of a bitch. Somehow, even though they were representing him, nicely, I should say, uh, because he is obviously a bad villain. You know, I don't know why Matt didn't pick that up, but they said, you know, he had weird heartbeats and stuff too. But we didn't say that when when he was introduced, but oh, yeah, he Matt did was say, like, yeah, he... his heart is fluttering like a bird, he's got like weird bird like tendencies or whatever, like ah! breaths and stuff or whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, so uh, the guy ended up being a bad guy, of course, and he has kidnapped Karen Page. I don't remember. Do you remember why? I don't remember why he kidnapped her. Uh, no, I don't. Rem- I don't remember if explicitly said why. Okay. Well, he kidnapped her, and basically, this is like a new power power that Daredevil hasn't really tried. Um, but he gets to like the top, the tallest building on that side, which is the Empire State Building, uh, in the comic at least. And he like listens real hard, basically, and it has like the the moment where you hear all the traffic and all the noise of the city. 
And then all of a sudden he's like, I'm, wait, I'm listening for, for my name. Say my name, Karen. And you hear someone say, Matt Murdock. And then you see she's saying, Matt Murdock will find me. Like, and, and he's going to prosecute you when, when he does or whatever. And so he hears Karen talking to the owl. So now he knows where to go. And, I, that's what I was talking about as far as like amplified power. Cause I've never seen him do that. He literally right. listened through the entire like city, basically. I agree. So, like, Sometimes that's really cool. when needed in this, well, like, yeah, it's like he can hear really good, but he couldn't like, he can't like, I'm, I'm talking specifically like the way the either TV show, I don't remember the TV show shows it like this, but for sure the shitty movie with Affleck does. You know, like you, like you were saying, he's got like echo location in that movie. Yeah. So like he can't see the bowling pins in the in the bowling alley, unless he did that to. That's what I'm saying. Like they don't they don't speak spell everything out for you. It could have been that he was also hitting on Karen, and he wanted to do that on purpose. I don't know, but it seemed like genuine that he didn't know where the pins were, and then it just happened that she was happy and jumped on him. Like that wasn't his motive necessarily. Yeah. You know. Because that would be too mean to Foggy, I think. Like I said, it's weird that he doesn't know. Or he it seemed like he was on purpose ignoring Foggy's affections for her. Because he liked her too. That's what it yeah. seemed like in this book. Like, he was going out of his way to... Like, he was on... An, he was... Uh, what's that called? In b- behind, like, in the back of your mind. He was in the back of your mind, like, cock block and Foggy. Yeah. Like, uh, like... Um... Well, not purposefully doing it, just maybe he... He's, That's what I mean. Like, he, it's on purpose, but it's not. Like, it's unconscious. There you go. It's unconscious, you know, unconscious. bias or whatever, trying to, to, to cock block um, Foggy. So, uh, he does find them, and... Um, oh, that's what it is. I'm, this is why he gets her, because he, he, they're working for all these superheroes, and so he figures, oh, if I, if I can get Matt Murdock... Uh, to to steal stuff from them, the Fantastic Four, and you know then I'll have a bunch of shit on Reed or whatever you know like like basically it's he must be a Fantastic Four villain I would assume if that's if that's how it is. The first time I saw him, he he was in Spider Man. Okay, but I mean I'm sure they obviously they you know yeah some they overlap somewhat. Us, so. But yeah, either way, so that's his his uh, his plot here is to kidnap Karen Page to ransom her for secrets from the fantastic four uh, not knowing that murdoch is daredevil so um daredevil finds her like i said and she's in a cage like a bird cage but like a human-sized bird cage and he goes there and i thought this was cool they didn't explain it at first but then they kind of say have a line that explains it away but he basically is able to bend the steel bars and let her out um and she's like wow you you can do that and he's like i don't know if it was adrenaline or if like i could just sense the weak part of the bars because of like sound by them tapping or something you know but like i just i I was able to bend the bars like they don't really they don't they don't make it like oh he's got he's strong enough to break a bar normally or bend a bar it's like oh i don't know how i did it but basically i think it was like adrenaline for trying to save karen kind of thing yeah. Um, but he saves her and this is where she basically falls in love with him and also they kind of allude that she knows it's Matt um, she falls in love with Daredevil but also knows because he says you know hey make sure you you know you should run away Karen Yeah. He don't stop until you reach the police oh yeah what were you going to say oh no he just yeah he helps her down and then like they get to the eggs and he's like now run Karen she's like how did you, Karen yeah how did he know my name's karen and he's like oh he like she actually says that like how did you know my name's karen and he's like oh that's easy like i've seen you in my dreams ever since i can remember and it's like like really like that's not that's not gonna like i thought he was gonna be like a little bit more uh realistic than that or whatever so yeah um but either way he could have been like i saw you in the window of murdoch and nelson or whatever and I, I, I wanted to learn about you, so I looked you up or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> to be something like that. But no, he didn't say that. He was just like, I saw you in my dreams. So, but uh, as they're kind of flirting, he sees uh, the owl come out of nowhere and attack. It picks, the owl actually can fly, which I didn't know. Yep. I don't, I haven't really, like I said, known this villain. I know of him, but I don't really know what his power set is or anything. But he can fly. 
and he's got talon like hands and or fingers and feet. Yep. So uh, he picks Daredevil up by his or that, by by Daredevil's shoulders with his feet. The main thing about the owl that I I like that was cool with him is that because he can fly like an owl, is like you don't hear him coming usually. It's he's so uh, he's a stealthy flyer. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And they have a big epic fight, which is pretty awesome. I thought it's funny. He's got like a horde of owls that like also fly around, which is yeah. funny because it's kind of <laughs> like bats with Batman. But it's like, like whatever, whatever, a fucking owl. I did like the owls, like the bird sound effects on the pages. Wee, wee, wee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> takes are, he's fighting him. Yeah. Just like what? <laughs> yeah, that's he, yeah. He like the we should say the owl is the one doing the sound effects. Like yeah. he's, he's saying them, which is funny. Yeah, he, like he, it's like the extra cartoony ish of a villain. Like, yes. <laughs> I always picture the owl from like Fox and the Hound or something. Like, oh like, yeah, like that that's the one. Like he kind of looks like that owl, but just his or eyes like are the, um, uh, What's the um, rocket doodle? They have. Oh yeah, owl, the rocket doodle owls. owls. There. there you go. Yeah, those fucking evil owls and rocket doodle owls. Um, yeah, or that one that's like, I like the Juna. Like the Juna and the Moon and the Spring. Oh yeah, that was I like the old, singer. <laughs> that old cartoon. Yeah. I don't remember what the cartoon, but his dad, his dad looks like. Yeah, because yeah, because he wants to sing, and his dad's like, "No, you will, you will you go sing to classical." To study. No, it's like he wants him classical. to sing classical music, but That's he right. wants to sing ragtime or whatever. So. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyway, so he uh, the owl like gets out of the room because he's losing the fight. He's like, "Another day, Daredevil." And then, like, <laughs> he breaks through the window, but Daredevil wraps his billy club line around him and, like, is hanging off the back of the owl. And I don't know where they were. I guess they must have been close to the, the ocean or whatever. Uh, because, bay or something. Yeah, the, the bay, because um, he the owl's flying over the water, but he's dragging Daredevil, and dra- Daredevil's out actually able to swing up and, like, jump on his back, and he's like, we're finishing this tonight. And he, he's like talking about how like when you don't have the advantage you have to like put put your opponent in like another in like basically in a fish out of water scenario where like you put him in an uncomfortable situation and but he puts the owl in water and then this is like they they leave it open-ended i don't know if marvel made him do this but they're like he's like basically owl dies owl like drowns and then they're like like um but do, do do bad guys ever really die you know like they leave that like open-ended i don't know why they did that but um they do leave that like uh do like but people always have a tendency of coming back from the dead yeah so like he says that i guess maybe later on he actually does come back in a daredevil story or something so maybe he had to say that but it made it like he he drowned they made it seem like he drowned they don't show his dead body floating or anything though so yeah um so they leave it like that and then the next day daredevil is or Matt Talk, is. I'm Matt's sorry. Talking Matt is Karen. sorry. It's not dead. I was, you know, I'd say they're 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 superhero now. But yeah, Matt Matt is talking to Karen in the office, and he's talking with her about like, oh, Daredevil this and Daredevil that, because she's saying Daredevil rescued me, and this is what it was like, and he was like, boom, pow, and knocking the shit out of the owl or whatever, and um, they she does a swing, and kind of overextends herself, and she falls forward. And just Matt is able to catch her. And he's like, Karen, the way you talk about Daredevil, a regular guy wouldn't have much of a chance. That is if you still don't have a boyfriend. Yeah. He's like smooth talking her. And as and he knows fucking Foggy still has the hot. He had a ring. He was going to propose. Yeah. He hasn't done that yet. This is he's about to propose today because she got kidnapped and came back. So Foggy's like, oh, this is like. I got to propose to her because fucking she almost died, you know? So he comes to the office, Foggy does, with, you know, roses and the ring and everything. He's ready to propose, and he looks through the door. He sees fucking Matt got her got, got her in her, his arms, like, dancing with her and shit or whatever, like, asking her out, saying, you don't have a boyfriend, right? And she's like, oh, no. And uh, both of them are assholes for this, by the way. Like, she knows, obviously, that Foggy... And, matt like her and knows that they're best friends and this might be a thing so like maybe we should talk about this but no she doesn't bring it up and neither does matt he's an asshole too yeah. <laughs> and foggy doesn't bring anything up either so he's kind of a stupid as well but 
like yeah just this whole like triangle i was like could be taken care of with the conversation just some, just some communication yeah, this, yeah. for being for being lawyers and like a secretary who writes everything down they're not good with their inner communication <laughs> yeah, no they're not so uh foggy lee is broken hearted he throws away i don't know if he throws away the ring but he definitely throws away the flowers uh he probably doesn't throw away the ring because it probably you can get a refund on that probably but um yeah so he he's heartbroken and uh we see the, the that's the end of that issue we start the next issue with um foggy and and matt aren't in the best of terms now obviously foggy's being snippy we'll say yeah. at work he, he's kind of being passive aggressive because uh he's angry that they're kind of going out now and matt gets a kick out of her reading the daredevil exploits in the morning in the paper because he knows it's, it's him and she doesn't know but does she we don't know if she actually knows it's him or not she might have um suspicions or whatever but they haven't really said whether she knows or not um and so but he loves hearing her recount his tales from the paper and in the meantime the phone's fucking ringing and foggy's like is anyone gonna get that like why do we have a secretary like <laughs> like, like why am these I are good questions phone? yeah exactly so uh he's all pissed off and mad at them and and he leaves and walks out he's like i can't handle this you guys suck or whatever so uh matt is like oh we got a you know we got a person i got to meet in prison uh who's asking to see me and he brings karen along because you know why not it's a it's like a a day date while we're at work or whatever i mean it's a very weird you you, you shouldn't bring your secretary this is, first off you shouldn't date your secretary second off shouldn't bring her to work functions as a secretary and then act like it's a date or whatever but they kind of do that and then he yeah. scolds her for being like this isn't a date or whatever but it's like but you asked me out to lunch basically for like and then on the way we're gonna stop and do this thing but they're meeting a prisoner and that prisoner is the purple man do you know who the purple man is john yes i do and only because of jessica jones because i did know about him before. okay i wasn't sure if you'd seen jessica jones but he is the bad guy in the first season of jessica jones his power is the power of extreme suggestion. And I didn't know this was part of it. I don't remember this being in the comic, but apparently it's tied to his purpleness. So he's actually a purple man. <laughs> so uh, when he talks, as long as you can see his color, I guess, he can influence your, uh, what you do. So he overtakes Karen and it's, it's useful uh, in this comic. And I think probably in the alias, comics which are jessica jones uh, title um when he's in that like i think that the people get like a purple tint to them when they get taken over so yeah. he was the reader no they're under his spell or whatever so karen automatically goes under his spell and daredevil nothing like matt murdoch doesn't have any issue because he can't see him yeah so the the point is you have to be able to see him in order to for it to work so they even say like colorblind people aren't aren't susceptible to his power and i guess blind people aren't either so uh purple man's like oh you know what murdoch i won't be needing your services after all guard let me out and the guard just lets him out opens the door you think they know who they were dealing with by the way if they arrested him yeah if, uh, they don't everybody has to wear like you know blinding glasses around yeah or, or something, something something but uh or ch change his color to red or something in the glasses you know like a like a uv Oh, there you go. Yeah, like color changing. Yeah, but uh, so he gets the the guard to open the door, and then what well, just walks out, and then Matt's like, "Oh, I how dare you?" or whatever, and then he runs off to be Daredevil because <laughs> he can't stop him as Matt Murdock or whatever. So he's got to like, oh, "I'll be back," and then like goes to change, comes yeah. back as Daredevil and Kilgrave or uh, Purple Man's name is Kilgrave. So Kilgrave, um goes down the you know is walking down the, the stairs of the the jail and the cops are there and they're like stop and then he's like he's like hey actually you, yeah actually pull out your guns and shoot daredevil for me because apparently he can't be you know uh affected or something so uh, the cops start shooting at daredevil but he, before they can really get off too many shots he throws his billy club and it does like like a geomet like you know when people play pool and they can like plan how the, how the balls bounce off the wall of the pool table. Uh, yeah. They he does that with his billy club and it bounces off the cars and smacks the guns of all the cops. So 
they kind of wake up after that and they're like, what the heck happened? That was insane. Yeah, I mean, see, I will say this. We didn't mention just because, you know, we're, we're moving the story along. It doesn't move a whole lot, but there's a there is a scene where he and Foggy are going to a, a bar with Karen for something and they end up playing pool against these guys. And right. they're like, oh, well, his, you know, he's that one guy's blind. Of course we're going to win. And then, that's probably why they have that scene to establish this scene later or whatever, you know? Yeah. That, like, yeah. And well, yeah, what does Matt do? He fucking runs the table because he's able, yeah, he's able to like, you know, he, he hits the balls and he hears, you know, where they all go. And then, so he's able to, yeah, you know, make them all go into the, the pockets on YouTube. Anyway, that's why I was thinking like, I don't know about the bowling. Right. Yeah. So, so. well, yeah, it's, it's hard to know. It's hard to know because with at least with uh with pool if you i guess with bowling it's the same thing if you just throw it straight it will knock them over so yeah i don't know i don't know so this one i'm not gonna hold it against them it was like so when they wanted his powers to work specially they would and then sometimes they would be a little less or they'd be a little underpowered or whatever you know either they'd be overpowered or underpowered yeah. depending on what the situation was but um, but e- either way, it works for the story of that moment. Like whatever they're telling, it works fine for the story. So I don't, I don't hold it against them. But um, that was uh, like a like kind of a, uh, I was not continuity, but just like a a storytelling issue I had with this one. It was, even though it was small, it didn't take me out of it too much or anything. I still bought every time he had power. That was like when he's on top of the building. I'm like, all right, like he can listen to the city and pick out Karen's voice uh so like that kind of thing is like wow he's really overpowered but then he can't bowl (laughs) so it's like okay that's why it's like was he like could he bowl and he was fucking hitting on her like while he knew foggy liked her you know what i'm saying like he went there on purpose to cock block foggy that's what i think i don't know it's it's one of those things like you could read it either way either either they were incorrect in the way they wrote it sometimes or they wrote it exactly how they meant to and he was he was being a dick which is true because matt murdoch is kind of a dick sometimes so maybe that's he is yeah um but and anyway the, 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 well this is interesting so they ca- he catches up with uh purple man Kilgrave, and uh, this was we talked about this this specifically was where we caught that extraness because he's he's again you know he's he's writing out the these letters to karen and he says that he as he's like going up to is showing us going up to f- to find uh, Kilgrave. It says, well, I fought a lot of foes, Dr. Doom, Kingpin, Bullseye. And he says Bullseye again. He's like, Bullseye. Like, yeah. Like there's that extra, like, oh, you know, why did he bring this up? And now we know it's because eventually he unfortunately kills Karen. Yes. So uh, we should say that Kilgrave has gone to a, a was, was, what is the, what is the place that uh, Kevin goes to in New York when he, when he, in the, um, in home alone too i I don't remember the hotel it's a big penthouse Uh, yeah yeah whatever it's called the place that donald trump owned at the time and and uh fuck what's it called the name of that hotel ah whatever it looks like that it looks like a a big uh fancy hotel and he gets a suite there by just walking in and be like we'll take two you know we'll, we'll take a suite and we'll get all this stuff they go to the suite um and he's like karen why don't you get more comfortable you look you look hot in that dress or whatever and she like takes off her dress she's getting naked and uh all of a sudden the door knocks and he's like oh that must be our room service that i ordered and he opens the door and it's daredevil daredevil bursts in and uh shoves the shove the table into his chest i like to think that's because it knocks the wind out of him and he can't talk yeah would stop his power at least i think i think it would stop his power um from working i don't know if he has to actually say the words or if he can if he can think it and just project as well that would be cool if later on if they establish that but either way he uh as he's getting beat up by daredevil he says karen be a good girl and jump out the window for me and so she goes to the balcony to jump and this is where i was like is this how she dies yeah you know we we haven't established how she died or anything and i was like holy shit i don't remember this or anything like are they are they showing this for real and uh he's able to save her as she's jumping and she like come, snaps too as like she's not looking at purple man anymore and um he's like she's like oh my god you're always there to save me he was in my head like it was so creepy or whatever and 
it's like it's fine i'm here now and then they like kind of meet eyes and like uh she says they have this little flirty moment where she's like she's like why do you wear yellow he's like why do i wear yellow she's like yeah i just thought devil should be more red and red's my favorite color yeah (laughs) and then he's like oh really interesting and so like that's that's the reason they give why he changes his costume to red all red (laughs) yeah because karen was like "Uh, i like red but uh he ends up being able to i like how they just wrap this up too like like you see them land and then you just see like um like daredevil's billy club wrapping up uh purple man in in like a i guess the flag from the outside because purple man came downstairs to get them yeah and he tells everybody like attack daredevil but before he could finish the sentence uh, he's wrapped up so people can't see him, and uh, which which makes him e- able to be taken in custody. So, uh, can't he? Uh, Daredevil leaves Karen as Foggy comes up and is like, "Oh my God, I I saw it on the news. I was so uh, scared for you and Matt." And then uh, Karen, but Karen's not even paying attention. Karen is looking at Daredevil's butt as he goes away. Basically, she's just like, mm, mm, "That Daredevil, a piece of that Daredevil." And so. Uh, they the next day karen goes into work and foggy's like talking it cuts to the inside of the she's walking into the building and foggy and matt were already talking about like they're having the argument of like foggy saying i thought you were my friend and you went behind my back and started going out with her and you knew how i felt and all this stuff and I, but i can't hate you matt like i tried and i can't do it like we're, we're friends forever and i'm not gonna throw it away about some girl or whatever and then like karen walks in she's like what are you guys talking about like, she, she says matt yeah she says their names hey matt hey foggy and they're like matt foggy like normally she would she used to call them for a while you know like we said mr and miss mr murdoch and mr nelson that was when she was either flirting with them or whatever but now she's calling them matt and foggy and she says uh you know mr daredevil himself is going to show me the city because they actually made a little date at the end where he's like, hey, if you come by this one spot tonight, I'll show you the town. So now she's all about Daredevil. And uh, that helps them, I guess, become friends again, or at least bond on the fact that she's not into either of them uh, now because she's into Daredevil. So yeah. Um, now the, the question is, does she know that Matt's Daredevil or not? Because she kind of, they alluded to her maybe figuring it out. And maybe this is just her solving their problem of like, I don't want you guys to fight. So I'm going to date Daredevil. And Foggy doesn't need to know that you're Daredevil or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, as long maybe she's just into dudes with suits, the costumes. So, <laughs> but yeah, so that's like uh, the end of that like story portion about like with Karen and like how they met and all that stuff. And then it cuts to the ending of this book where he's now in the red suit. It's modern day or present day in the comic and everything's black and white again. And he's jumping around and he's like, you know, this is the last letter I'm going to write you um, pretty much like, I don't, I don't know how to, how to forgive, you know, the, the guy who killed you. I don't know what I'm going to do because you're dead. And that's like so hard for me and all this stuff. Um, and if maybe if you hadn't walked through those doors, like I, you would be alive today. Like if you hadn't become our secretary or I hadn't, you know, uh, saved you or whatever, you wouldn't be dead because then bullseye wouldn't uh, think of Karen page when he thinks of daredevil yeah. you know, kind of thing. So, um, cause I guess probably they started hanging out more as Karen and daredevil possibly. So, and maybe bullseye saw that. So, um, so he's like, I'll never forgive myself for what happened to you. And, um, yeah, basically like he just kind of talks about it uh and he found a way to honor his father at the end because instead of wearing the yellow because obviously he was wearing the yellow to honor his father and now he uh he's wearing red so he actually bought the old gym that his dad had refixed it up and uh he got a villain a guy who was a villain his name was gladiator to be the he like rehabilitated him and was like hey you want to you want to work at this gym i'll get you a job since it's hard to get a job if you're a felon and so uh, he's got the guy who was gladiator be the the owner or like the manager of the gym. Yeah. And uh, it's called Battling Jack's Gym. And so that's how he's uh, leaving with his dad, like the memory of his dad. But then he's also like, um, 
you know, he just says like, I'll miss you, Karen, and I'll always love you. And he like swings away. And, and that's how it ends. It just ends very like quickly like that. The wrap up of this was pretty fast at the very end. Um, so that's how it ends with him saying, I love you to a letter of Ka to Karen after she passed away. Uh, and we find, you know, after finding out that, you know, he also honored his dad that way. So, um, John, what'd you think? What would you I liked it? it. I, it's a, it's another solid one from them. Um, like I said, every time the, um, all the ones we've been reading are, are fantastic. And this is no exception. And again, the art phenomenal. Um, the uh there was a couple story points that you know was kind of like well that you know like we said we were we were a little confused kinda, on things yeah but overall it was great and it's that again as you know like you said it's one you could you could pick up without having a red daredevil before and get the gist of like who daredevil is and his story right um but then also like it had some it had some unique beats and i really like ooh, pardon me uh, i really like that um we didn't get like the exact same daredevil story that you, you kind of like think it would know would get with his origins too. Like, yeah, we, yes, we got the, um, you know, his, in general, like his dad dying because that's a, that's an important beat, but um, yeah, we didn't get uh, like, it wasn't like all about the Kingpin right away. And it was, it wasn't at uh, all. At <laughs> the all. Kingpin yeah. Wasn't it at all. I mean, yeah, we can, we can probably guess that maybe he's the bigger, head but still yeah like it was like low level guys and then like him you know finding out you know where his where his new where his powers lie and where his full like level is at, as well as like dealing with his like day-to-day -day stuff with karen and uh foggy yeah but uh yeah i like that uh, he you know the the little cameo fantastic four and but then uh so you know establishes that they have some income coming in right and and then uh oh, speaking I like, of that real quick I want a Fantastic Four color book. They don't have one, so I want whatever that would be. I don't oh, know. we're telling them now, like we yeah, guys I, do hey, Fantastic. Four. Yes, yes. Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale make a Fantastic Four one. Yeah, Fantastic. you call it orange and have it be about the thing. The That'd thing, be cool. Yeah, Fantastic. Or you, or you could orange. say invisible and have it be about. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Invisible. Clear, clear, clear. Right? Yeah, call it clear. <laughs> Fantastic Four, clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys. So get on that one next. Uh, but yeah, I, I was great. Uh, I really enjoy. Uh, I really enjoy these. They're they're all they've all been fun reads. Uh, good storytelling, fantastic art. Um, I'm gonna give this one an eight. Nice. That's that's you know I for me personally I was trying to to grade it in my head because uh, while the the art is so amazing, I really enjoyed the story as much as we had like little little things that were like inconsistent or possibly to us, or we just didn't fully understand in the moment. Um, they didn't really matter that much, even though they kind of nagged in the back of your head. I felt every emotional beat though, that was supposed to be felt like when she dies or when, I mean, not when she dies, but when, like when, uh, when the guy dies, Slade dies, when his dad dies, when, um, when she chooses, like the tension between her and foggy and him like that all that stuff oh yeah um so i i felt all that like it was supposed to be felt so i don't really like hold some of the things against them that they either did for story reasons like him not being able to bowl right or whatever but i i actually do now now talking about it with you think that matt was being a dick because like you said he went he played pool and knew how to do that yeah he can fight and jump on cars and hear people from far away on top of buildings so yeah he should have been able to it probably pull. was one of one of those things is like he had a thing for karen too and he's just like well let's just see how this plays out i'm gonna just play my cards too and right like i mean because you know he's been best friends with foggy he can't i guess it's one of those things too you you don't you don't want to be like nah if i like her it's just like well i'm gonna like her too and then we'll see who she goes for right but you know what they should they should have done it's bros before hoes man you know that and so <laughs> that's right should have been like no girl is better than our friendship so uh but they didn't because this is dramatic comic so <laughs> so yeah but uh the the only things i didn't like about the comic these are like two two things um that i just felt were like i don't know not fully fleshed out or something 
was the way it ended. I thought it ended too abruptly. I would have liked to maybe see like something. I don't know. I just felt like something was lacking at the very end. Like I didn't feel the emotional closure fully. Maybe a flash of her of of her dying of some sort, or like been... the bully cub coming at her head or something while he's talking about. It. I don't know something like that because it just ends with her being like, "I'm going on a date with Daredevil," and then like that's it. Like, um, yeah. So it, were you gonna say something else? I was just gonna say maybe it was too close to the release of of that technically when they were writing it or something, so they didn't quite have it all or... No, I don't think so, because like I said, I think that happened, that did happen in 1999. Yeah, that and this was 2001, right? Yeah, so it should have been well, this was, yeah, this was released in 2001, so it should have been I guess it probably should have been, yeah. Not not close enough to be, you know, overlapping or ahead of it, so that's why I'm like "Mm." I kind of just wish there was a little bit more at the end that would emotionally satisfy that that closure that he's feeling or whatever. Cause I didn't feel it at the end. Like it just kind of felt like, and eh, that's the end. I was like, Oh wow. Like, Oh shit. We only have two pages left Tim. Let's just uh, wrap this up or whatever. Like something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, it kind of just feels like it got away from them at the end and they just had to like wrap it up at the very end. And like I said, I'm talking about like the last two pages or whatever. So yeah. I just wish there was something a little more that uh, satisfied something. I don't know what it would be in me or whatever, but like, yeah, I just, I just didn't feel the emotional satisfaction at the end at the very end for it and then um the other thing i didn't like was um that that karen page is so oblivious to their uh like uh what's it called their attracting attraction to her yeah. like she just seemed so blase about them you know i wish they had like she, if she just gave her a couple lines where she's like was she like i never know did she actually like foggy at all ever you know what I mean? Because they established that, like, if she calls you Mr. or something, that means she's kind of, like, into you. But when when she meets Foggy, is it just formal? And then he gets a crush, and it's just him? Like, I wish she there was, she would have said something like, you know, like, um, yeah, I'll go out with you. Like, we had a blast last night or whatever, and it was fun. Or, or like, even if they go on real dates, one real date, and then Matt's on the second one or something. You know what I mean? Something like that where – it kind of establishes that she did have a crush on him. And then maybe we see her falling for Matt and being like a turmoil in her inner, inner self or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, something's going on besides just like, she, like she just seems like kind of a, a girl who is aware that men like her, like all men just like me. And at some point I'm going to choose one. And that one is neither, neither of you it's daredevil. You know what I mean? Like, it just kind of makes her seem kind of cold or whatever, like her character. And it doesn't make me want, like, or it doesn't make me like that he's dating her. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it doesn't give her the best uh, look as a romantic interest. Because she just seems kind of like above these men. Yeah. And they're like, whatever they're doing doesn't matter. Like she doesn't like any of them unless she has like a, a, a whim off offhand and then, throws them away for the next guy or whatever you know what i'm saying so it just kind of makes her feel like stuck up or something like that so i kind of feel the she deserves more than that as far as her character um uh, has been given a lot of stuff to do in the <laughs> in the years that she's been in daredevil and a lot of a big story arc where she's like you know addicted to drugs and all this kind of stuff and has like a very sordid uh past and issues with addiction and things like that that I just felt like it, it didn't feel like Karen Page to me the way that he wrote her in this. Yeah. It worked for the story, but just as like, if having read a lot of Daredevil, I just felt like, oh, like that's not the Karen Page I know necessarily, you know? So um, that was my only other thing that I didn't like. But like I said, the art and the emotional beats of the story really were solid. So, and the story overall is pretty, pretty solid. So um, I'm going to give this one a seven. I think... It is, I think I gave the Hulk a seven too. It is just as solid as that. Um, the art is fucking fantastic. I like Daredevil more than the Hulk. So this one for me is like art wise, I would love to have some pages from this book. Like, <laughs> like very, very cool Daredevil art in this. So very much uh, so. Yeah. So, uh, and, and like, you know, like some people might have had issues with how the Hulk looked um, as far as uh, his design. Tim Sales Daredevil. Uh, my wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your wife. Uh, she, I just say that it was like. funny because 
I ended up like Tim Sale's version of the Hulk, especially like that first cover. Like, like that's like my favorite version of the Hulk now. I just love it. He just looks so unique and cool. And my and I was like, hey, honey, I think I want to get this. Out. I'm going to try to find like an art print of this or a T-shirt or something. And she's like, no, I don't. I don't like that Hulk. You should, no, we're not. She's like, maybe a T-shirt. I was like, we're not hanging that. On those <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't want to look at that face. <laughs> so yeah, that's. I mean, I. You could say he's very monstrous. I guess he is. So. He's yeah. He's. He's very, uh, yeah, monstery. Yeah, <laughs> there you that. go. Just leave it at that, monstrous. Uh, so yeah, uh, but this this Daredevil just looked very, um, like a gymnast or what, like very buff gymnast or whatever. Like, did a really good job drawing him, and uh, yeah, I liked all the fun stuff they showed him doing, all the parkour and everything. It was very fun. So, get this one a seven. Uh, John, you give it an eight. Next week. What are we reading, John? Uh, oh, next week we're reading just a fun out there, and we're gonna read the original uh, of Hook Jaw. <laughs> now, let me just interject. You might not know what Hook Jaw is, but I will tell you what Hook Jaw is. It is a British comic from the seventies that basically was capitalizing on Jaws fame, I guess, and it's just about a killer shark that kills people. That's it. It's literally shark is a killer and he it's a great white and he tracks people down and he murders them that's it on the ocean of course not on land but uh actually i don't know i haven't read gets, the, i haven't read all the old stuff so maybe he, he does gets out on his flippers and he takes to the land <laughs> he grows legs but yeah we figured it would just be fun to read like one of these older uh ridiculous kind of exploitation comics i guess you'd call it like and it was so it was so violent for the 70s that britain banned it so that's also so we, one of the reasons why I wanted you to read it. Yeah. So Ness, now it's like, oh, now we kind of have to check this out, huh? <laughs> right. And and I'm a big fan of shark uh, paraphernalia, like movies and stuff. So Jaws, Deep Blue Sea. Oh, Deep Blue Sea. You know, yeah. Bait. Uh, oh, The Meg was good. The Meg. I fucking love that movie. Yeah. Like, I I can't. I I love shark stuff. So like, like killer sharks or stupid sharks. Yeah. Not Sharknado. I don't like Sharknado. But like, <laughs> like any of the other movies are fine. Not Sharknado though. Um. But yeah, so I, I saw this comic and I was like, I must read this. I believe I read one issue of the old one and was like, this is great. I should read more, but never like never got more of it. And then on top of that, they, they did release a newer five issue series that came out like a couple years ago. So if we like bait from the 70s, maybe we'll read the new one um, and just compare the two or something later. But uh, for now, at least, we'll read this first story arc of Bait Archives, Volume 1, which is, I think, the only volume of it. But there, there's only five issues in it. So, um, so yeah, that's what Hook we're reading jaw. next. Hook Jaw. So, next <laughs> week, we're reading that. And, uh, hey, if you guys want to support us, be or feel free to donate to our coffee page, ko-fi.com slash planes, trains, and comic books. We have a couple tiers up there for members, or you can just donate one time uh, there. So uh, our just for you know, our members, uh, they get to, there's a couple tiers there, like I said. There's a blue and gold tier, which is um, you get to suggest the book we read, which we did la a couple weeks ago. We did ba Battle Pug for one of our members that subscribed to that, and uh, which was a, a great read. So thank you for suggesting that. Uh, Otaku Mike was that was the guy who did that. So um, he's one of our greatest supporters. So we like to say thanks to him all the time. Yeah. And uh, also check out his podcast with uh, his buddy, Jin, uh, called the Otakuology Podcast. They talk about manga and um, anime and fandom in general. So check that out. And uh, the second tier is if you like Matt's minis, or if you don't know what Matt's Minis is, I do a podcast as well on top of this one called Matt's Minis, where I read through all the Swamp Thing issues from issue one to the end of all the issues that are out. So it's ongoing still. I'm maybe ha I was just over halfway, I think, of the uh, 80s Swamp Thing run, and um, it is awesome. I love, I love it. I'm reading every issue. I'm trying to make sure everybody gets to know Swamp Thing better because everybody needs more Swamp Thing in their life. So uh part of that is um because of because i like other characters besides swamp thing i am reading i'm doing a matt's minis of hellblazer 
which is John Constantine's character. That's his series. Um, and if you ever wanted to learn more about the fantastic, uh, uh, wise cracking asshole mage, uh, <laughs> John Constantine, uh, definitely check those out. Uh, I think we're what, four or five issues in now. So, um, it's, it's just starting out, but having fun with that. Um, so check that out if you want to support us and, uh, or, you know, always, uh, contact us on, um, uh, all of our social medias. What are those, John? Yeah, we've got our Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube channel, obviously too, for, uh, we've got a lot of exclusive content there as well. We've got the Matt's minis. Uh, we've got some unboxings. We've got some, uh, some other cool uh, hardcover reviews. Uh, so definitely check it out. We got a lot of good stuff out there. You can also email us at plain trains and comic books, all one word at gmail.com um, for any suggestions, uh, tips, things like that as well. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening and supporting when you can. And uh, on that note, we'll see you guys on the next one on the next one. Bye. Bye.